Hi, and welcome to another episode of Making Things. I recently posted a video called Fix a Broken 3D Model in SketchUp, and it was meant to be as short as possible to kind of get through the basics, but I did have some people ask me to slow it down a little bit and just show in more detail what it was I was doing exactly. So that's what I'll be doing today. Um, if you haven't seen it yet and you just want a brief one minute and a half short version, then I'll be linking back to that video. But if you want to see every step along the way with a bit more explanation, then this is the right clip for you. The first thing is the context. Here we have a model and this is something that happens often when you're kind of being creative and trying to build something up without the exact uh, specifications of what you were going to do in the first place, but only a solid idea. And when you start building constructively, you can end up with uh, lines that aren't exactly on plane that end up being slightly uh, diverted from the, the the rest of your lines and it can be by as much as a thousandth of a millimeter I've had that happen to me to I think the sixth decimal once where you insert a line it looks like it's perfectly snapped and something else in the software you know kind of bugged and you you linked an endpoint to almost the right place you don't notice it keep going and an hour later you've got shapes that should fill but don't so this is a, a an example of the, of this as I was cleaning up the lines for my friend's model it just didn't work anymore so what you can do to fix that is avoid the um, gradual buildup of shapes which is where you can have these errors in SketchUp the way we're going to do that is to actually start with a large block instead and cut away from it rather than build up. So it's going to be more like sculpture rather than construction like we would see in a 3D printer. Just to note though, if you have shapes that are round, keep them for last. Uh, absolutely keep them for last. This is one of the things that I don't like so much about SketchUp is that although it's very easy to use and actually I find it great for 99.9% .9 of my uses. If you put in curves earlier in and then change your mind and try to move things around, it really doesn't like that. It doesn't play nicely with moving curves. It'll be fine for adding them in and cutting out and so on, but you can't really change your mind all that easily once you've got it there. So first step. Um, the first step is to measure all of our distances. Now when you're measuring distances, there's the little dimensions tool here. And uh, if you're lucky and your lines are full, all you do is you click and you pull away and you see that it got blue here. But we're in a context here where we've been building up. We have we already know we have problems with some lines. So clearly there are going to be lines that have random endpoints that are cut in places. So we're going to do it the long way and we're just going to click from edge, from end to end and then pull away. So you can see this is when it's 98.6 millimeters and earlier when I had clicked it was actually at 95 millimeters wide. And I happen to know that the walls on here are supposed to be 2 millimeters all around. Which means that clearly there's something wrong here even with the automatic endpoints on this. Uh, the, the walls are either not 2 millimeters or there's something that went a little screwy here as well. Uh, so, this part I, I, I will fast forward through a little bit. Alright, that should be most of the dimensions that we need. We have the total height. I could measure the inside height, but I already know I want all walls to be 2 millimeters in here. So it's uh, not an issue. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to start by making our block from which we're going to chip away. We're going to select the square tool and something I like doing just so I don't mix up my axis is I'll move my, my square purposely in a really obvious rectangular shape so that at the bottom I can see the numbers. Um, I'm going to have one that's really a large number and one that's a small number so it's very easy for me to know which direction I'm going to be typing in my numbers. So instead of trying to get to the right si uh, size by moving around the mouse you just type in the values and we'll get it correct. So we know that the width is the first number because it's 153 and the height right now is 7 millimeters. So we wanted a width of 98.6 millimeters, comma, 71 millimeters depth. And now we have our square. 
Um, it started off in the wrong direction, so we're going to right click and reverse the face. That's just going to be easier to work with later. And then we're going to use the push pull tool, and again we're going to be using the numbers to move it uh, the num uh, in the in in the uh, distance box. But what we're going to do first is we're actually going to send it in the direction we want it. If we start going down and we type in 29.6, it's going to go 29.6 down. If we start pulling up, even if, like, I'll, I'll do it for an example here, I'll go up 184, and I'm going to type 29.6 millimeters, and there we have it. So it's really that simple. The next tool we're going to need here is to hollow out, um, well, actually, to make the walls that we're going to be hollowing out, we're going to use, we could just use the, uh, the line drawer and, you know, measure out two millimeters, make our walls and all that. But there is a little quick tool we can use to do that. It's the offset. So we're just going to select the edge. And then again, the same as with the push pull, we just need to select our direction. It doesn't matter how much I move it. As long as I'm in the direction to indicate to the software which way to go, I'm going to type two, enter, and there you have it. We have our two millimeter walls all around. We had a 54 millimeter wide box inside of here, and it was 27 millimeters high. So we're going to take, and this was from the inside wall. So we're actually going to just going to make it another square. So I'm going to do the same as usual. I'm going to make it really wide, so I don't mix up which direction I'm going. So it's going to be 54 by 27. Now. If I offset in here, I'm going to have an extra offset on the inside, so it's up to you on whether you want to draw the lines or use the offset and then erase the extra lines, but you're still going to have to fill the gaps at the bottom. Um, I'm just going to draw the lines here. So the other thing we're going to do to make sure we have the right distance is, again, I'm going to go in the direction I want. And I'm just going to type... Oop, wrong. I'm just going to go in the direction I want, which is actually down here, not along the line. I'm going to type 2, enter, and now the reason I do this is I now have an end point. And we're going to do the same thing at the bottom just to make sure, and again this is the type of thing that when you're constructing, this one is almost certainly going to be the right one if I put it along the right axis. I mean it really, it's 99.999% certain it's going to be fine. But this is the kind of thing that happens where, it, this is a simple shape, there's nothing for it to anchor on by accident. Um, but it's when you're doing this kind of thing that you'll inadvertently uh, have misaligned lines, which then later on lead to bad planes, which then cascade into all of these weird shapes we were having earlier. So although we don't need to do this, we're just going to, as a precaution, as practice, I'm going to do our two millimeters. You can hear, see here it locked, and it's along the red dotted line, which means that clearly our red axis would have been fine. We're still going to do it. So we're going to do two millimeters, enter from endpoint to endpoint. I'm going to do the same thing here, two millimeters. Now it knows we're doing a lot of two millimeter segments, so it's actually started locking into two millimeters all the time. Um, so see here, now I touched the center line and now it's getting all wonky and it doesn't want to do the two millimeters anymore. So that's, that's the kind of thing that, here it's an obvious one, but when you accidentally do that and you are off by a fraction of a millimeter, that's where you can lose uh, a track of an error. So we're going to do two millimeters and endpoint to endpoint. We're just going to clean up ahead of time. I mean, it's not necessary, but we're going to delete these two little extra segments that we don't need. Oh, we did forget one measurement, so we're going to go back the actual width of the inside boxes. Now, again, we could have figured it out because we know that all the walls are two millimeters, but it's 25 mils. So we're going to use the, the, the square tool again, and sure enough, it's going to be a perfect square, so it's 25, 25, and we could just do our 2 millimeter wall, or we can just go from the other corner, we already know it's going to be 25 by 25, and we have our 2 millimeter wall in the center. Now we're going to go back to the push-pull tool, and we're going to bring down uh, the inside. So we're going to dig out our shape. Rather than having built walls everywhere, we just drew lines on the planes. And by drawing lines directly on the plane, we know that they are actually perfectly on that plane. And because we're not building the walls either, uh, we're just reducing, we know that the tool is going to have perfectly made walls as well. So we're going to go down by 
27.6 millimeters since our total height is 29.6 and I wanted two millimeter thick walls. Again, I'm just pushing in the direction I want and then I enter the value and press enter. And that's it, now we have most of the box already built. The only thing left is the little nub at the front. Um, the handle doesn't really matter all that much, how it was designed. I just know what my friend's goal was. but So we're not actually going to measure it because I don't care to make it exactly the same way. I'm actually going to go with a circular one now just for fun. Just because I told you guys to avoid uh, circular shapes until the very end. So it'll make a good example. Um, hmm, two millimeters seems a little small. We're just gonna we're gonna go with four millimeter radius, and then before pulling it out, we're gonna remove excess lines, and pull it out two millimeters. Again, we go in the direction we want to enter, and we have our shape. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and have a good day.